All right, welcome back to the next lesson on how to create the basics of Among Us. For this lesson, I'll show you how to create an interactable prefab. These interactable objects are used so that the player can open up the different mini games and do their tasks. Now, before we get started, if you've enjoyed this tutorial series, please make sure that you're subscribed to our channel and help our channel grow by sharing it with your friends or posting our content on social media. Now to create our interactable objects, we'll want to start with a 2D sprite. So you can right click in your hierarchy, go down to 2D object and select sprite. I've then renamed this object to be interactable and I've set the tag to be interactable as well. I've then set the layer of this object to be the other side and I've temporarily set my main camera's culling mask to see the other side and that's why we can view it within the scene view. Now I've set the sprite image of our sprite render component to be the electrical panel for the wiring mini game. And this sprite image belongs to a sprite sheet that I've compiled of all the interactable objects in the basic Among Us level. And you'll be able to find this sprite sheet on our website and I've left a link in the description below. But once you download this image and add it to your file system, you'll then need to slice this sprite sheet. And so with the image selected in the inspector, you'll want to change the sprite mode to multiple, after which you can hit apply and then we'll need to open the sprite editor. Inside the sprite editor, you can just do an automatic slice. So you will use the slice drop down menu and make sure the type is set to automatic and just click slice. This will add boxes around each image and you'll just want to double check each box to make sure they all look good. After which we can then hit apply and now you'll be able to drag whichever sprite image you want to use for your interactable object into the sprite render component. Next up we need to add a ridge body to this component and I've then disabled gravity and I've frozen all the positions and rotations of this rigid body. Another option that you could probably do instead is just set is kinematic to be enabled. Now we're adding a rigid body to this object to make sure that we can access functions like on trigger enter and in order to do that we'll also need to add a sphere collider. With the sphere collider you'll want to make sure that is trigger is enabled and you'll want to set the radius so that it's a little bit bigger than your sprite image. The last component on this object is a new script, but we're going to skip this for now and talk about our child object. This child object is just another 2D sprite, so you can right click on the interactable object, go down to 2D object and select sprite. I've then renamed this object to highlight and we'll want to make sure that this object is set to the other side layer as well. The next thing that we need to do is set the scale of this object and we want it to just be a little bit bigger than the parent object. And so I've set the scale to 1.1 in both the X and Y directions. We then need to make sure that the sprite image is the same image that we're using for our parent sprite render component. And the last thing that we need to do for the sprite render component is create a new material for this object. And so here I have a new material called highlight and this material is just a standard material which I've set the rendering mode to cut out. The albedo is white and I've enabled emission and set the color to white as well. If you wanted to you could set this color to yellow which is how I think it is in Among Us. Once you have this material created you'll want to select your highlight game object and drag this material into the materials field of the sprite render component. After this, we'll go back to our parent object and we'll create this new script. So in your project window, you can right click, go to create C sharp script, and I've named this script AU Interactable. Once you have this script created, we'll open it up in our coding environment. Now this script's not too long, it's pretty simple. The first thing that we need to do is create some new variables. The first variable is a serialized build of type game object, which I've called mini game. The next is a game object, which I've called highlight. We then need to create an on enable function. And inside this function, we'll initialize our highlight variable. So I have highlight equals transform.getChild. And we want to get the first index child, so I'm passing in a zero and then dot game object. We then need to create both the on trigger enter function and the on trigger exit function. Inside the on trigger enter function, we want to look for the tag of the other object. So I have an if statement where I'm checking to see if other dot tag is equal to player. If it is, then we want to enable our highlight game object. And so I have highlight dot set active and I'm passing in true. Inside our on trigger exit function, we want to do the same thing, but we want to disable the highlight game object. And so we could just copy this if statement, paste it in here, and then change the true to false. The last thing that we need to do is create a public void function, which I've called play mini game. And all we have to do inside this function is enable our mini game object. 
and so I have minigame.setActive and I'm passing in true. Once you've done this, we can save the script and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we can attach our AU interactable script to our interactable game object. And so you can just select the script and drag it onto the inspector. Now the next thing that we want to do is create a prefab out of this object. But before we do that, I'm going to disable the highlight game object. We can then select the parent object and we'll just drag it into the prefabs folder. For me, I'm just going to apply the changes. The next thing that we want to do in this lesson is create the interaction between our player and the interactable object. And so let's go over to our player controller script. Now once again, just a reminder, I'm jumping around from showing you how to create the basic game and how to turn Among Us into a multiplayer game. And so it's really important that you pay attention to the changes that we're covering in each video and not so much differences that you might see in the code that we've already covered. Now the first thing that we need to do inside our player controller script is add a couple variables. So here at the bottom, we have a serialized field of type input action, which I've called mouse. The next is a vector two called mouse position input. We then have a camera called my camera, another serialized field of type input action called interaction. And the last is another serialized field of type layer mask called interact layer. Once you have these variables created, the next thing that we need to do is register a function to our interaction input action. So I have interaction.performed plus equals interact, which is a function that we'll be creating later on. We then need to enable both our mouse and interaction input actions. So in the onEnable function, I have mouse.enable and interaction.enable. In the onDisable function, I have mouse.disable and interaction.disable. The next thing that we need to do is read in the mouse position from our mouse input action. And we'll do this within the update function. So here at the bottom of the update function, I just have mouse position input equals mouse dot read value and we're looking for a vector two. And the last thing that we need to do for this script is create our interact function. So here at the bottom I have a void function called interact. This requires a parameter of type input action dot callback context called context. Inside this function we can check for the phase of our context parameter. So I have if context dot phase equals input action phase dot performed, then have a debug statement, which I'm gonna comment out, but we want to create a raycast. And so I have a local variable of type raycast hit called hit, and another local variable of type ray called ray, and we're setting it equal to my camera dot screen point to ray, and we're passing in our mouse position input. This is essentially how to do a raycast from your camera to your mouse position using the new input system. Nothing's really changed except for the way that we read in the mouse position. Once we have this ray created, we can then cast it. And so I have an if statement where we're doing physics.raycast. We're passing in our ray and we're outing our hit and the third parameter is our interact layer. Inside this if statement we can check to see what the tag of our hit object is. And so I have if hit.transform.tag equals interactable. We then need to create a local variable to hold the interactable script. And so I have au interactable and this variable is called temp and we're setting it equal to hit.transform.git component and we're looking for an au interactable. Once we have that script, we can then call the play minigame function. So I have temp.playminigame. This function will enable the game object that is the minigame or task that we want our player to do. Now there's one more check that I actually want to add to this code to make sure that the player is within the radius of the interactable object. And we'll add this check in before these two lines of code. So I'll type if hit.transform dot get child and we want to get the first child which is our highlight game object and we want to check to see if our highlight game object is disabled in the hierarchy and so I'll do dot game object dot active in hierarchy but to see if this game object is disabled I'm going to add an exclamation mark out in front if it's disabled in our hierarchy then we want to return so now we can save this script and we'll go back to unity Inside Unity, we want to select our player prefab and we'll need to initialize our new variables. And so first off, we have our mouse input action. For this, we'll want to click on the gear icon and make sure the action type is set to value 
and the control type is set to vector2. We can then add a new key binding, after which we'll double click on it and set the path to position mouse. For the interaction input action, we just need to add a new key binding, which I've set to left button mouse. Finally, for the interact layer, I've set it to other side. Once you've done this, we then need to set up our interactable object within our scene. Now in Among Us, there's several interactable objects per level. And so for each one, I would select my interactable prefab and drag it into our scene. I'd then change the sprite images for this interactable object to be whichever task I want to create. And so for this one, I'm actually going to change it to the sequence number game. And I'm changing both the interactable object and the highlight object. We can then reposition this object to where it is in our scene. And I believe this one is within the reactor room right here. And I'll probably scale it up as well. And the last thing that we need to do in order to set it up within our scene is to set our minigame variable. Now I already have the number order minigame that Mark created in my scene. And so I just need to select this panel object that's disabled and drag it into the minigame variable. And now I should be able to test out my project. All right, so here I have my player. I can walk around. I'm going to walk over to the reactor room. And now when I walk into the trigger zone of our interactable object, you should be able to see the highlight appear. And when I left click on the interactable object, you can see the mini game appear. I can then play through the mini game and it goes away. Now to make sure that the radius check is working, I'm going to go outside the trigger zone and then try to left click on the interactable object. And there you can see that the mini game is not popping up. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to create an interactable object. Of course, you're going to want to make sure that you take some time to add in all the other interactable objects in the level and then connect the mini games once we've created those. Now please give this video a thumbs up and make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.